Hello everyone, this is Monkle Zunky here, and in this guide I'm going to be showing you stuff on how to help you get from 1 to 99 Slayer. Now I realize that Slayer isn't a very linear skill, you can't say, go kill this monster for a specific amount of time and you'll level up. However, there still are some general guidelines that you can follow while training the skill that are going to help you achieve faster XP rates, and also level up both your Slayer and your combat stats faster. So I will warn you, in this video I have a lot of statistics, it's not a very colorful guide with a lot of pictures, so if you're just in interested in really hard facts and information, you've come to the right place, but if you're interested in kind of a cutesy guide that um, is more of the presentation than really the information contained within, that's not really what this guide is about, this guide is more just to tell you guys exactly what you need to know um, if you aren't already uh, highly knowledgeable about Slayer and you really need some help training the skill. So to start out, there are some reasons to train Slayer. First of all, it's my favorite skill in the game, so I'm always going to be a strong advocate of training Slayer. I really believe it's a great way to train your combat stats, and it also has a lot less grind involved because you're constantly switching areas and dif different monsters that you're killing. You can also earn quite a bit of money through Slayer drops. Um, even though in the evolution of combat you make a bit less money from Slayer, you can still make about 250 mil-ish profit from 1 to 99 Slayer if you bank all of the drops that are worth money and don't um, spend lots of money on uh, extra expenses that aren't really needed, such as a cannon. You can also get a lot of charms through Slayer, and you can get to a fairly high summoning level just through training your Slayer, which is also very nice if you don't have a 99 summoning yet. And it's also just nice because you get to visit a lot of different environments, and you get to train different combat skills. It's not just melee. You also train your range and your magic on some tasks as well. So for the Slayer Masters to use when you're just starting out and you haven't done combat before, or if you're below level 60 combat, I would recommend to use Turiel in Taverly. He's right really close to the lodestone. He's just right by a little bridge in Taverly. He's quite easy to find, and he'll assign you very low level uh, monster tasks that you can kill even if you're just starting out in the game and you haven't trained your combat stats much. And then at level 60 combat, you can move over to Edgeville Dungeon and use the Vanica Slayer Master who's going to sign some higher level tasks and you'll get more XP and more money through these as well. So as soon as you're level 60 combat, you want to move over to him. And then at 130 combat, after you complete the quest Smoking Kills, then you can use the Simona Slayer Master who you meet during the quest. And to do the quest, you need 130 combat and 35 Slayer, and that's also the requirements to use her as a Slayer Master. And then once you reach 160 combat and 75 Slayer, you can use the Slayer Master Curadel for the best Slayer tasks in the game, and she is located in the Ancient Cavern. And she assigns the tasks that are the best XP and the best money that you're going to get. There are some bad tasks mixed in there as well, but later on in the video I'm going to tell you guys which are the best tasks and which tasks you want to avoid at all costs. So some quests that are really, really helpful. There's tons of quests that help with Slayer. I just picked out the ones that I most highly recommend. So first of all, Fairy Tale Part 2 for those fairy rings. Very, very helpful for getting around. The World Wakes for the Automa Automatons task, which is uh, one of the better XP tasks in the game, and it can also be very, very good money. The Saving Ceramic Vars part of the recipe for Disaster Quest, and this unlocks the best area to kill black dragons in the game. The Legacy of Sergei's quest to kill mutated bloodvelds because if you don't do this you should always skip bloodvelds you should never do that task no matter what slayer level you are the horror from the deep quest unlocks the ability to get dagonoth as a task which is very very useful for killing dagonoth kings for slayer which i'm going to talk about a bit later in the guide and also the tale of the muzpah quest which unlocks the ability to gain i strike worms for a task and you also need a fire cape to kill these, but Jad isn't too difficult when you're pretty high combat stats, and you're going to be pretty high combat stats if you have 93 Slayer to kill these creatures anyway. So going over some basic melee gear that you would be very useful for Slayer. Um, if you're 60 attack or below, use dual wield dragon weapons or just the highest tier dual wield weapons you can use. For example, if you're level 50, use rune. If you're level 40, use adamant, and so on and so forth. At level 70, you want to be using an Abyssal Whip and an Offhand Dragon Longsword. At level 75, you want to use a God Sword, probably a Bandos God Sword or an Armadil God Sword. The Armadil God Sword is a bit more expensive, but it's a bit better. At level 80, Chaotic Claws, they're the best chaotic weapon for Slayer, and I would recommend them. 
and at level 90 you can use your dual Dragors, which are probably the most useful items for Slayer, however they are fairly expensive, and I know not everyone can afford them, so if you can't afford them, just stick with the Chaotic Claws, you'll be getting slightly slower XP rates, but that's okay. And then for the armor, I would recommend Bandos or Varox. Even if you have Torva, I wouldn't recommend to use it because it does degrade and it is fairly expensive to recharge, so you're going to be spending a lot more money than you need to on Slayer, and you don't need the extra defense that Torva gives. And Torva does give slightly more damage than Bandos, but it's not a huge upgrade, so I would recommend just to stick with Bandos. And if you can't afford Bandos, use Varox armor. For the magic setup, if you have 60 major below, use Grifolic Wand and Grifolic Orb, or just the best wand and orb combo that you can wield. Once you're 75 mage, use a Staff of Light. Once you're 80 mage, use a Chaotic Staff or a Virtus Wand and Book if you hate Dungeoneering. I would recommend the Chaotic Staff though. For Slayer tasks, the uh, damage output between the two is really hardly any different at all. You're going to be getting the same XP rates whether you use Chaotic or Virtus Wand and Book. And at level 90, I felt I would just put this Seismic Wand and Singularity, although I know hardly anyone actually has those, so that's not a very realistic choice. And then for your armor, um, I choose to use Subjugation Robes, or you can use RMs. I would recommend not to use Virtus uh, for the same reasons that I recommended not to use Torva. It degrades, it costs money to repair. Subjugation is great, it doesn't degrade. It is fairly expensive, but it's a worthwhile investment if you're going to be maging a lot, which you do in Slayer. Now for the range, you don't use range nearly as much as you use melee or magic and slayer, but you still want to have gear just in case you do have a task that requires it. So at level 60 range, you use a red salamander coupled with Terramintar for ammo. At level 70 range, you use a black salamander coupled with Haralander Tar for ammo. At level 80 range, you want to be using a royal crossbow or dual wield chaotic crossbows. At level 90 range, again, not me many people have them, but the Ascension Crossbows. And for your armor, use either Armadil or Royal Dehyde. Do not mess with Kyrils. The Royal Dehyde has the exact same defense as Armadil does. Armadil only has a slightly higher damage bonus. I'd recommend just to use Royal Dehyde because, again, if you have Drygors, you will rarely ever use range for Slayer, and it's not really worth spending on money on Armadil when I personally only use the range style for one Slayer task that I do. So here are some highly recommended items that you should get if you're planning on being serious about Slayer. The Bone Cut Crusher and Demon Horde Necklace combo. This requires 90 prayer for the Demon Horde Necklace. You can get these through Dungeoneering. And the Bone Crusher will bury all the bones of the monsters you kill, and the Demon Horde Necklace will give you prayer in return for the bones that are buried, so that's very helpful. The Bunyip and Yak Pouches. Again, if you don't have 96 summoning, I would use a Bunyip for pretty much every task. However, if you do have 96 summoning, while you're doing dragon tasks, for example, or black demons or abyssal demons, you can use a yak and bank their bones or bank their ashes and make some extra money. The Charming Imp from Dungeoneering, this requires 100,000 Dungeoneering tokens, and this picks up all the charms. Probably the, by far the most useful Dungeoneering item. It's absolutely a must for Slayer because you're going to be getting tons of charm drops, and it's not fun having to pick those all up individually. Trust me, I got 99 summoning before the Charming Nymph came out, and it wasn't fun. The Takul Zo, which can be got from the Elder Kiln quest, this is a great ring to bank. It teleports you very close to both a bank and a fairy ring, which is super useful for Slayer. The Rings of Slaying, these require 75 crafting to make and 400 Slayer points to unlock. And they're just basically an upgraded um, enchanted gem, so they're quite nice. And also extreme potions, which help you kill monsters faster, and you need 94 herb lore for them. And you can also use turmoil if you have it too. However, turmoil isn't really an item, so it's not mentioned here. Here we get into some of the numbers. These are the best tasks by Slayer XP. These are by my rates. I didn't go off anyone else's. These are what I have tested and I achieved myself. I killed all these monsters for 20 minutes, and then I averaged out the XP per hour that I got. I also just wanted to mention I was going absolute full speed with the best gear that I had at the time, mostly Dragors for these tasks, and these are the XP rates that I achieved, so I would consider these to be fairly highly accurate XP rates. 
So the Abyssal Demons are the best Slayer XP in the game at 151k per hour. And also I just wanted to note that both Dark Beasts and Ganodermic Beasts can be slightly higher XP per hour if you do use a cannon on them. However, I just feel like a cannon, it costs a ton of money for not a whole lot of benefits, so that's why I choose not to use it. I would highly recommend to not use it because it just costs so much and it doesn't deal a whole lot of damage in return. So anyway, these are the XP rates all without a cannon. That's worth mentioning. So the Gan Ganodermic Beasts are a great task because you can achieve both a lot of money and XP from them, which is pretty rare. And also the Dagonoth Kings, um, they're very, very good Slayer XP if you tri bird them. Uh, you have to solo them, uh, or if you duo, duo the Dagonoth Kings with a friend or someone, you cannot be in loot share, otherwise you won't get Slayer XP. So you have to be either soloing or free for all in the Kings to get Slayer XP, but they're very, very good Slayer XP per hour if you know what you're doing. Again, I will be making a Dagonoth Kings guide in the future, so if you don't know how to solo them, um, just stay tuned for that. These are the best tasks for combat XP. Keep in mind that hit points experience is not included. This is only attack, strength, defense, magic, or range, depending on what combat style you're using. And Dark Peace Beasts are the best combat XP in the game at 373,000 combat XP per hour. That is with Drygors. If you are lucky enough to have Ascension Crossbows, it's going to be even higher because they are weak to range. And then Water Fiends are also exceptional combat XP. And then Grafolapines, surprisingly, are the third best combat XP Slayer task in the game. I was not expecting that. But anyway, you can see the method of how I killed these. For most tasks, I use Drygors or Chaotic Staff. Again, I rarely ever use range for Slayer. And these are the best tasks for summoning XP in the game. Mithril Dragons, surprisingly, are the best summoning XP in the game. Keep in mind, though, that they mostly drop green charms, and not everyone decides to use their green charms. So if you decide not to use green charms, then Mithril and Steel Dragons are not nearly as good XP per hour. But I just found it surprising that those two tasks actually are more summoning XP per hour than Water Fiends. And then, of course, Exiled Calphites, they drop a lot of blue charms, so they're very, very good Slayer. Slayer X, or summoning XP, and then the Skeletal Wyverns surprisingly are also over 100,000 summoning XP per hour because they drop a ton of Crimson Charms. Again, that's a task that many, many people have blocked, but I would highly recommend doing. There's such a great task for both XP and Charms, and also pretty good money. So these are some horrible tasks. Horrible, um, I am justifying that by the XP per hour, the Slayer XP at least. These tasks, I would highly recommend to avoid all costs. There are a few that um, you can do if it's your preference. For example, the Avian Seas and the Blue Dragons, they're very good money. The Avian Seas are about 800k profit an hour. The Blue Dragons are about 1.5 mil profit an hour if you have a pack yak. About 1 mil profit an hour if you don't. And the Hellhound, Sequoz, Terror Dogs, and Virewatch are all very quick tasks. You can all do those in about 10 maybe 15 minutes depending on how many you're assigned so if you're really low on slayer points I'd recommend to do those especially the terror dogs that task only takes about five to ten minutes so if you just want the points but are willing to take the hit of the to horrible horrible XP that they give that can be a good task also any task that's not listed on here I would recommend to do but as always if you really truly don't enjoy a task for example I hate spiritual mages it's my least favorite task in the game I choose not to do them do not do any tasks that you absolutely hate otherwise you will get burned out of slayer so spiritual mages are still good slayer XP but I choose not to do them because I can't stand that task so if you have any task that you can't stand do not do it just stay away don't let yourself get burned out and quit slaying because you begin to dislike the skill and if you need any help with Slayer tasks, I do have a link to my Slayer Guides playlist in the description of this video. Not all of the Slayer Guides are done yet. There's still about two-thirds of the guides that Curidal assigns that are not done. I only make guides for Curidal because you're going to be spending the vast majority of your time slaying using that Slayer Master, and I don't think it's worth really focusing too much because it doesn't take very long to get to 75 Slayer, and everything after that is all Curidal all the time. But if the guide isn't in the playlist yet, it will be coming in the future. However, if you need any help with what to bring, or if you need any help with how to get there, just join my friends chat and game. I'm not always online, but if I'm not, I'm sure there's going to be people in there that can help you. And if I am online, just ask me and I can tell you, 
because I've done all the Slayer tasks many times. But anyway, thanks for watching this video, guys. I really hope you found it informative. I spent a lot of time uh, researching and stuff for this guide, and I hope that I did a good job. But anyway, if you have any questions, just ask me in-game, and I'll reply, as long as I'm online at least. And farewell.